Good day class, this is the continuation of our discussion last few weeks ago. So this is all about the contemporary art techniques and performance practices. And this time, I am going to have a discussion regarding the contemporary art techniques and practices or art techniques first. But before that, let me tell you about contemporary art again. This is a refresh, uh, refresher of what we have discussed last first quarter. Contemporary art is the art of today which is produced by the artist that provides an opportunity to reflect on contemporary society and the issues relevant to ourselves and our world around. So contemporary arts are art which uh, really occurs of the current um, setup. Okay, karun. Now let's go to contemporary art techniques. The contemporary art techniques are um, popper, popularly known as minimalism, found objects, and large scale. But in our discussion last time, we have discussed uh, several techniques. So let me take you back to our discussions last week since this is the continuation already. Week. So the first one is minimalism. You know what minimalism is, right? So minimalism is the most important and influential art style of the 1960s. Minimalism identifies works of art which is most often comprised of geometric shapes in simple arrangement and lacking any decorative dynamic flourishes. So I mean to say minimalism has a very simple, um, simple technique. It can also use line art or it could also include geometrical shapes in the art but this time we eliminate the unnecessary elements or unnecessary details in this art so kung ingon pa na simplicity is beauty there are no lots of details in this type of art a minimal lang gamay lang from the word minimal gamay lang and these geometric, geometric shapes characterize the elemental or bare bones form of art. This is what we call simplified. Kung mayon kag simplified, ang pinakalist na, ang pinakasimple na gyud nga type sa art ang imong makita. Okay, like for example, drawing kag baso, baso ra. Wala nang mga lamisa diha, daghang detail diha, baso ra gyud makita, line or um, you have experienced drawing or making a minimal list art, right? And you are not including lots of details on it. It's just simple. It's, you know, simple. But elegant. And it is movement or it is a movement in various forms of art or art and designs, especially visual arts and music, where the work is set out to expose the essence, essential, and identity of the subject through eliminating all non-essential forms as what i have said a while ago you're going to eliminate which what whatever is unnecessary so the next technique is what we call cubism so cubism is a truly revolutionary style of modern art developed by pablo picasso and george brax so it ha it was the first style of abstract art which involved at the beginning of the 20th century Later on, I will show you the different types of art that I am mentioning or the different types of techniques that I am mentioning now. And um, Cubism also was an attempt or was an attempt by artists to revitalize the tired traditions of Western art, which they believed they had run out their course. And Cubists challenged conventional forms of representation, such as perspective, which had been the rule since the renaissance so their aim was to develop a new way of seeing which reflected on the modern age so this one is in a modern form of art where you can see different types of shapes and you're you can see geometrical shapes squares rectangles triangles or whatever shapes you know and then still you can figure out what is being portrayed or what is being expressed on the art like for example you're going to uh, um, emphasize or show a man and a woman who's uh, somewhat like performing as lovers or you are painting lovers or I mean drawing lovers in a cubism 
art and you are just going to include different shapes in it and then include different vibrant colors when you're going to put colors already on the art that you are working on next is what we call the social realism this is another technique in contemporary art where social realism is a term used for work produced by painters printmakers photographers writers and filmmakers that aims to draw attention to the real socio-political conditions of the work class as a means of critique or a means to critique the power structures behind these conditions like for example um, photographers are showing a situation or a setup wherein there are people who are protesting for justice or um, for poverty about poverty or somewhat like they are trying to ask for help and assistance from the government whatsoever they want to portray and um, some other filmmakers they are going to make a movie regarding the the realistic situation that we are facing nowadays um, or the musicians are going to compose mass songs or protest songs or songs that portrays or shows the current situation of the Philippines or in the world or any realistic situation that um, might show or express the message of the artists um, also, painters could also paint uh, genre. This is the correct term for the theme which uh, fits on social realism. And next is found object. Found objects is a loan translation form or from the, from the French word object trave, describing art, describing art created from the undisguised but often modified objects or products that are not normally considered materials from which art is made like for example a shrimp and a phone a phone the telephone and instead of the traditional design of the phone you are just going to replace it with the design of a shrimp or you can also use a tire into a candle stand or you're going to use uh, a can into a flower vase so you found a can and then you turn it into a flower vase so that's an example and um, moreover Pablo Picasso first publicly utilized the idea when he posted a printed image of a chair canning onto his painting titled still life with chair canning in 1912 so Marcel Duchamp is bought to have perfected the concept several years later when he made a series of ready-mades or consisting of completely unaltered everyday objects selected by the Duchamp and the designated as and then designated as art I mean. So as an artist, found objects tend to include the artist's output. And at the very least, an idea about it, just like for example the artist's designation of the object as art which is nearly always reinforced with a title and uh, recent critical theory however would argue that the mere designation and revolution i mean re relocation of any object ready ready mades include constitutes a modification of the object because it changes our perception of its utility its lifespan and its status like for example we're just we're just expecting a can an empty can to be thrown on a garbage bin but then since we are an artist and we found the objects we are going to redesign it and reuse it and make some uh, improvisation so we are uh, trying to make designs or unique designs from cans into flower vase or um, it could also be pen case or pen holders it could also be pots flower pots so whatever the artist wants to make and then uh, another one is either uh, what do you call that maybe like for example a pants an old pants the artist want to make uh, an old pants into a pot or flower pot like he's going to put some 
soil and fertilizers on it and then plant uh, flowering plants in there and then hang it on the wall so its design is unique and it's used according to how the artist utilize the found object and I hope that you understood um, next is large scale from the word large we cannot expect that it's just an ordinary size so we are expecting beyond uh, the norm so large scale art is more than just a painting that happens to be oversized by design it is larger than life often massive enough to fill a room and its impact is deliberate and it's meant to overwhelm it by itself i mean so command a space and dwarf everything else that comes near it so like for example if you're going to come near or come closer to the, the this type of art you become dwarf because you you look like a tiny piece of art in there because the the art is huge gigantic meaning to say it's very very big and um sometimes it could be you know, usually it's a painting a wall painting that is very very large extra large yeah you can use that you can you can see that usually in malls where big spaces are available and in malls um, what else um, fences along the streets or kind of basta mga big rooms it's somewhat like you are filling an empty room with the art Okay, um, it's usually painting, but I don't know. There are some which uses a digital application or digital art on it. And I have seen also from Reels, FB Reels, that uh, we are the usually, I don't know, nowadays there is already a machine that uh, imprints using paints on the wall, just like a painter who's doing the art, but it's not, it's already the machine who's doing the art. And, but I hope that there are many people still would appreciate the, the traditional type of painting. machine lang. So next is um, montage. Um, it is an art form consisting of putting together or assembling various smaller pictures to create larger work. And it's the production of a rapid succession of images into motion pictures to illustrate an association of ideas or composite picture made by combining several separate pictures. Like, for example, if we are going to check on a, a, some FB pages, you can see that there are some, some images which are cut out, cut out images from different types of uh, resources, like, for example, magazines, old magazines, or newspaper, or whatever resources. Uh, you are going to put those images cut those images either by paper tearing or by scissor you're going to cut those images into i mean smaller pieces and then you are just going to combine those picture to form a larger image or another form of image which is like for example from those cut out pictures you will form a face of a woman or you are going to, per to portray uh, social realism which is um, portraying the realistic uh, situation that is happening in our society right now through a uh, montage next is Puni um, let me check if there are more so here we still have large scale so manataani there are other contemporary art techniques so this is from other resources this is from scribe and the first one is collage this is uh, similar to uh, montage so is this is a technique of an art production primarily used in the visual arts where the artwork is made from assemblage of different forms thus creating a new whole so maumaura na siya pero lahi-lahi ragit po murag kaluha pero di sila pariha like for example like for example if you are going to make a collage from your pictures different pictures of different you I mean different stages of you from stage one from stage two until you 
you become a young adult so you are going to arrange those pictures in a collage um, according to how you're going to arrange it or you can also have cutouts of pictures and then you are going to create an image out of it this is a collage next is the collage used by artists or this is uh, a technique used by artists of the new realm a realism movement that involves making art from poster rip from walls so poster rip from walls you're going to rip a picture and then you're going to make another scene you are going to make another portrayals from the materials that you have used and you're it's it's done by rearranging again next is land art land art is an earth art movement in which landscape and the work of art are intricately linked so it is also an art form that is created in nature using natural materials such as soil rock or bedrock boulders and stones just like for example let's just uh, make it specific i mean let's try to picture a more specific example like for example when you are going to decorate i mean design your yard front yard you are going to use pebbles or stones and then with a combination of different uh, res uh no no different materials like um, clay or pots from pottery um, that is an art form another is you're going to use arrangement of the plants and then you are going to surround those with the rearrangement of the stones and pebbles a combination of stones and pebbles and shells that's how or if you're going to a beach you are going to design something out of the the materials that you have like for example shells pebbles stones and sand um you can also use starfish if you like or coral reefs that's all and then the next one is graffiti graffiti is writing or drawing scribbled scratched or sprayed illicitly on a wall or other surface in public places so sometimes you can you you can see graffiti in uh, on bridges i mean on the sidewalks or somewhat like some others are going to use sprays um like that and they're they're going to draw a huge images like for example i mean paint or portray or uh, create uh images like for example a dragon it could be a cartoon it could be um like this kanang kinkui kinkui i like this image oh, that is graffiti so next one is mixed media from the word mix it is a term used to describe artworks or artworks composed from a combination of different media or materials just like for example you have a picture from a magazine and then you saw different types of screws and then you saw a coin then you saw nails then you found um, cans tensions another and any other form of um, materials that you saw and found just another is kind of um, pieces of wood, ball pen, um, what else? Um, shells, and then you're going to arrange them to form images. Like, for example, you're going to, uh, you found a magazine, a picture of a woman, and then you're going to replace the, the hair with noodles, and then you're going to replace the earrings with the, the coin and the, the hook. And then you're going to make necklace or accessories using buttons, um, found buttons or coins. And then you're going to replace the, the dress with, or you're going to design the dress with uh, found leaves, dried leaves of plants and or stones. Just, that's it. Mixed media. You're going to use different types of uh, art materials. 
Next is the contemporary art performance practices. We are going to discuss about the contemporary art performance practices. The first one is conceptual, conceptual art. Conceptual art focuses on the idea which can be either abstract or social. It depends upon the concept of the, the artist. Um, the second one is the popular culture. Popular culture issues and aspects of popular culture which are dealt with either by conceptualizing or criticizing. And the next one is biographical, biographical which, is, which means of expression that which means that of expression can be social, poetical, or expressive. So that is what we call biographical. And next is poetic from the word poem, from poet. Okay, we are going to um, deal with poems here from a poet. This content or form is poetic in nature. You have experienced writing a poem, right? Especially when you are brokenhearted or you're in love or you are in a situation where you really want to write a poem. So I guess that is a best experience that you had your, during your English class. And next is social. Um, social is the current social and political topics that are dealt with, which are dealt which are dealing with often from critical perspectives. So you are going to um, focus more on the social situation or what is currently happening in our society. You're going to make criticism. You're going to write uh, essays out of your personal perspectives and understanding regarding the topic. Okay, you're going to develop something. Another is expressive. Expressive is both content and form, which is meaningful and communicative. Okay, when we say expressive, you are going to involve your expressions, your expressions, different types of expressions, and you are going to uh, create a content wherein it could emphasize meaningful uh, content or the the readers or. The listeners would learn something out of your content and then it could communicate what should be communicated okay what should be learned I mean now before anything else uh, before the quiz I will just give you the quiz later on and now let's continue with the different contemporary art and techniques and performances Con the continuation gihapon eh? um, done let's have the documentary documentary is the approach where um you are going to document or hold the elements of research from the word hold the elements of research we are not just going to make our a personal insights or personal views just to to uh just to give or create a content or write a content so we have to make further researches we have to gather the data exact data and then we are going to make interviews and other forms of data gathering so we can have the the exact detail uh, regarding a certain topic that we are developing next is the sense related the total artwork installation which are often interactive and affect different sense next is interpretation and synthesis of new media how can we attain the content so let's do local materials in the philippines so this is um some of these were discussed already last few weeks ago but then i will be uh reviewing or giving you reviews regarding the previous topics that we have discussed since um so local materials in the philippines as a review bamboo this is a material in which is uh, this is ex extracted from the matured leaves of the buri palm. Um, the fiber is durable and resistant to moisture. So, uh, no, I guess bamboo is a uh, no. I have a correction. Bamboo is uh, a, a a type of grass which grows as big as a tree, and this is flexible. And usually, bamboo is used for Hats, bags, baskets, um, singkaban, um, bamboo arcs. Um, it's also used as any other uh, materials like flower vase, uh, fruit trays, usually walls. Um, um, what else? Upholstery. Yeah. Furniture. 
makakita taani sa furniture. Um, it could also be used to make beds, uh, tables, or to give furniture lagi. And um, also, it could be used as a food. Kana iya hang ubud, tanan nagamit luthang, pwede mo magluwa na mga tray and other woven products. Next is coir. Coir is the fibrous material surrounding the fruit of the coconut tree. Kung sabi sa yapa na mo na siya ang gitawag ugbunot. And coir is usually used for plant um, kalitong lakayanan sa mga tanum, nga vine, like for example mga monstera, mga orchids, vine mga orchids, na siguro. Um, kanang sa kanyang katay-katay ng mga, mga tanom or mga vegetables ba ron basta muna bunot okay pwede na mo pang haling pwede pang abog sa lamok and then the, the, some other products are indoor outdoor fiber carpets so pwede siya mahimong carpets um, papaanan um, wall covering door mat di ba kay rough man siya ang iyahang texture is rough pwede ni mo siya sangit-sangitan sa mga sandal o mga sapato siya pa and then trails and then jo textiles jo textiles next is nito nito is a plant belonging to the fern family that grows abundantly in the uh, hinterlands of mindanao okay kanang nito kabantay mo ng fern nga nasa kalabungan or usahay mo katay ganin na siya panagsasato ang natara niya ini un kayo o kanang kanang magkatay katay bitaw samot na og padung na malaya na kinalig-unan jud so kasagaran ana is makita an na to siya daghan sa Mindanao or bisig sa kalabungan dito sa mga forest forest sa forest forest um, like for example baskets o oh, pwede nimo siya mahimong basket or fruit trays hats picture frames and bags of wallets whatever you like next is the pandan pandan leaves Diba, pandan leaves, um, this is a plant, a tropical plant. It is processed and transformed into splints that are being used as raw material. So, some other products which are from pandan are baskets, hats, picture frames, and bags just like nito. Okay? And next one is raffia. Raffia is a fiber extracted from an open buri leaf in three stages so kaning rafia ni undergo ni siya of three stages it's not just it, it's not just an uh, ordinary kuan kanang dahon nga wala ni agi o process uh pakita mo lang buli kana bang this is from a coconut family pero it grows very tall nya ang iyahang dahon is mura og kanang anahaw unyang iyahang palwa kay tunukon so ang tunok pwede ni mo siya ipang surround as isa sa picture frame um, it is loom woven into fabrics or used as wall coverings upholstery material folding doors and window hangings kasagaran ang gamit niya is ang dahon gyud pero ang sud pud ana pwede ni mo siya himong sagol sa landa Ang products are hats, placemats, folders, shoes, slippers, boxes, um, portfolio, and and um, lady bags, ladies bags. I mean, placemats, circular boxes, and document boxes. And the next one is rattan. Rattan belongs to the palm family. Palm family. There are different types of rattan palms, such as high or low climbers, single-stemmed or clustered rattan species. Um, kasakita naman siya tag-ratan, diba? Kasagaran na niyong magaman is mga rocking chairs, mga lingkuranan sa mga beach, resorts, mga lingkuranan sa mga restaurants, kasagaran na mga, na mga native establishments and uh, interiors are using native designs and furnitures. Um, ratan could also be used uh, into or to form baskets, picture frames, furniture, and other novelty items like Zoya Lounge, chair, Valencia Queen, Size, uh, I mean Valencia Queen size bed and rest divan. Next is Tikio. Tikio. Where is she? Tikio is a large, erect, and aquatic or marshy herb plant. It is found in central Luzon to Mindanao. It abounds in freshwater swamps 
and is newly opened rice and land at low altitude. So there are products you um, produced by Tikiao. The first one is baskets. Um, next is hampers. Next, uh, hampers with lids. Then bags, rugs, carpets, placemats, jar, and other decorative items. The next one is tikog. Tikog belongs to sea grasses. It is a native reed plant used as a raw material for weaving. So the products which are used by tikog are bags, decorative mats, hampers, newspaper racks, table mat, waste bin, tower, candle holding, uh, holder, I mean, and wall decor. I will show you the different uh, pictures of these later on in your handouts. And um, I'm just going to send it in our GC. So, what are other materials that are abundant in our region? Region 7. Um, it could be mixed media. Mixed media is a term used to describe artworks composed of combination of different media materials. I have already explained that to you lately. And um, next is improvisation. Well, any improvisation in theater is the playing of dramatic scenes without written dialogue and with minimal or no predetermined dramatic activity. So, wala moy gisunod, wala aning improvisation. We are not. Um, um, following written dialogues or just having ad libs, ad libs whatsoever. And most or all of what is performed in created is created at the moment it is performed. So, sagaran ani ad lib ng actual. Like, for example, you're just told what to do, um, how you're going to do it, and then you will just develop your own lines like that. And it is purest form. Uh, the dialogue, the action, the story, and the characters are created collaboratively by the players as the improvisation unfolds in present time without the use of an already prepared written script. So this is impromptu. When we say impromptu, pinakalit. Igor ka ing nanog mo ni buhaton and hikadere di ha mo mo set up and ham on yung buhaton mo ni scene. This is the story. This is the flow. And then voila, everything will be done by yours as a character. An important goal of improvisation is to enable the individual to develop spontaneity which is necessary in creating the illustration of reality. So this is more on realistic side. And the improvisation teacher must expose students to the theatrical environment through various games rather than lectures. So this is more on kanang motors, kanang action, more on movement. Then there are forms of improvisation. The forms of improvisation are short form. Short form um, means short scenes constructed from predetermined game. And the long form, scenes related by story or character. So, creative drama is the next one. Um, creative drama, it is an improvisational, non-exhibitional process centered form centered form of drama in which participants are guided by a leader to imagine and act and reflect upon human experiences as what i have said a while ago you will just be told to to do this and do that you're just going to portray this and portray that you're going to act uh, you're going to um act this character according to the rule a role i mean and then you're just going to have this and have that so depend this the director and how you will be taught and told to do Next is, you're just going to portray, basically, and basing on the human experiences. Next is, this process allows students to actively explore a subject or question through imaginative play that is facilitated by a leader and may involve a variety of improvisational activity. So, these activities are not scripted. Dili yun siya scripted. Impromptu yun siya. Dapat dili ka mag-loading, loading, mag-loading, loading ka na, mag Next is improvisational games or in improvisation games. There are some examples of improvisation game. One is the spontaneous response games. The, the second is the spontaneous movement. Then three is creative movement. Four is interactive storytelling. Spontaneous response games. Um, I'm just going to... Okay, you. Mau ni imong istoria, istoria demo stress, istoria kali ada pas. Ipasa ni mau ni ya unsai tu bagai dapat mau respond kali kaya. Ah, ah, ah. Uh, wait, sa maguna unak sa ko, di na lang pwede. Spontaneous, gani, ituloy-ituloy, di na sa iya, di li, mag-undang-undang, di kaya, 
Mag-loading. Hindi pwede loading din. Next is spontaneous movement. How you're going to act. You're going to act uh, the role or the character that you're portraying smoothly. Finely. Like rough. Marag wakakaibang sa buhaton. There's no direction at all. So, makat ang spontaneity. Next is creative movement. Sure, we're going to portray the character in a in a creative manner or in creative way. And then interactive storytelling. You're just going to make lines, uh, um, tell stories without following any script. You're just going to think and think and then um, develop a story out of your imagination. So that patili ka mag hanging there. And that ends our discussion for today. Actually, this is a discussion for uh, the whole week of, I mean, two weeks, okay? So, we have, or I have already uh, discussed and make a further review of what we have discussed in the previous weeks. And then, I have added already new information, which is a continuation of our topic last week. That's all. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you learned something. And I am just going to set another video for our uh, quiz.